Listen, it was gonna happen sooner or later. You guys can't expect me to talk about Killzone Mercenary for the rest of my life, can you? Hmm, don't answer that. Now, just because I'm making a video about Nintendo Switch doesn't mean I'm giving up on the Vita. Don't get that confused. I'm simply just changing the topic a little bit. We like a little variety now and then, right? Here are games that will convince my PS Vita owners to finally buy a Nintendo Switch. And before you say, well, I can play most of these on older consoles for way cheaper. Which is true, but let me ask you this. Can you play it while sitting on the toilet? I thought so. Number 5. Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy I don't know if you guys remember, but a while back I was bitching and complaining about the controls to this game. I didn't make a video about it, but I think I said something along the lines of how it played nothing like the originals. Well, I'm gonna take that back. Although I absolutely love the originals, I still think Insane Trilogy is a worthy remake, given its minor imperfections, which I will touch upon a little later. First, let me just say what I do love about the game the visuals. Vicarious Visions did an amazing job at recreating the look of the original game. Nothing's really changed in terms of layout, it's just that textures and detail have been given a complete makeover. There's more animation in enemy characters and more subtle details added to the stages. For example, you can sort of see the ocean floor during the jet ski levels, and additional ambient lighting now give environments a little more depth and volume you could say. The only downside to the visuals is that they do look a little soft. Mostly when you're playing in handheld mode. Upon starting the game for the first time, you might even think there's a thin layer of Vaseline covering the screen. The difference is even more apparent when comparing it to the PS4 and Xbox One versions. As you'll notice, things are quite sharper on the more powerful consoles. Crash is also missing the fur animation on the Switch, if you're wondering. Still, I was able to overlook the longer I played, and truth be told, I didn't even notice after a while. The music is great as well. There are updated versions of the original, which sounds fresh, but still retains that nostalgic feel. Now, my biggest problem with the remake are the controls. You see, in the original games, you can sort of make most of the jumps without having to be exactly on the platform. This, however, was changed with the Insane Trilogy. I don't know exactly what the issue is, but I do recall hearing something about the developers changing the model of Crash, in that his feet has to be directly on the platform in order to make the jump, whereas in the original, you could be slightly off and still make the jump. It has to do with his hitbox or something. Fans of the original will definitely notice a difference, but gamers new to the series probably won't even think twice. It took me a while to get used to the new jumping mechanic, but once I did, it felt just like old times. When this was announced on the PS4 and Xbox One, I completely held off on picking it up because I knew one day a Switch version would be announced. And although I was initially disappointed when I first got to try it, I can't bring myself to play it on any other platform but the Switch. This is one game that's made to be played on a handheld. Just make sure you invest in a Pro Controller or the Hori D-Pad. The Joy-Con does not do this game any favors. Number 4. MK11 the funny thing about this game is that I have it on PlayStation 4, but never really started playing it much until I got it on the Nintendo Switch. It runs surprisingly well. There's a few stutters here and there when performing certain moves, but overall the gameplay is very close. It's not perfect, but it's damn near it, which is pretty impressive considering the hardware it's running on. But I think the question you guys really want to know is how does it look on the Switch? In my humble opinion, I think it looks good. Yes, it's lacking the finer details of the console versions. Yes, the difference is apparent when you're playing on the big screen. And yes, the image can look a little soft, but in portable mode, it's not half bad. I can honestly say I wasn't disappointed. It's probably exactly what I expected MK11 to look like on Switch. My biggest issue, however, has to do with the whole crypt system. This is one instance where the graphical difference is most obvious. It looks horrible compared to the PS4 versions, and it doesn't run very well either. Moving around is fine, but opening up chests takes forever as there's constant loading. Now, normally I wouldn't mind, but the problem is that there's a crap ton of chests to open. Are they really gonna make me open all these chests? Seriously, they need to do away with this crypt system. It was okay back in 2005, but now it's getting a little repetitive. Just have the chests lined up in a row so I don't have to walk around in a circle. Luckily, the game has a load of other content for you to enjoy. A second story mode, which you unfortunately have to pay for, and a whole host of DLC characters to try out. There's also challenge towers, which is sort of like arcade mode, but where's Tester Might? And although this is probably my least favorite MK game in the series, I just love the fact that I can play it on the go against other people online. You wouldn't believe how many matches I put in right before bed. It sort of like became a ritual for me. Being that it's on a handheld, I feel MK11 on Switch is the perfect companion for practicing your combos when playing on the PS4 is not an option. Oh, and I almost forgot, please invest in a Hori D-Pad. Like the Crash Insane Trilogy, MK11 is just god-awful when using the left Joy-Con. Number 3. Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus 
Yo, this game is freaking awesome. I think it's brilliant how they have you start out in a wheelchair. It's funny, but at the same time, sort of ingenious. Now, I haven't played it on the PS4 or Xbox One, so I can't make direct comparisons to those versions. But in regards to other Switch titles, I would have to say the new Colossus is one of the more ambitious looking Switch games I've played. It's probably because it's trying so hard to stay true to what is otherwise a gorgeous looking game on the more powerful consoles. That aspect alone already puts it way ahead of most Switch games out there. Sure, the texture can look a little muddy in some scenes, but you have to give credit to the developers for having the entirety of the game intact. On-screen visual effects look great as well. There's a good amount of blood splatter, head explosions, environmental destruction, and the ever-satisfying sight of a Nazi getting disintegrated into a thousand tiny little pieces. That never gets old to me. And another thing, I'm actually surprised at how good the water effects look. I mean, look at those ripples. My one major complaint regarding the visuals have to be the size of the on-screen text. It's not so bad in handheld mode since you'll be holding the switch up against your face, but on the big screen, things can look a little small. The reason why I have the subtitles on is because the voice acting sounds so authentic, sometimes it's hard for me to understand exactly what they're saying, especially when it's being projected over a loudspeaker. Other than that, I think the game looks great considering the hardware it's running on. Of course, just having good looks alone wouldn't mean anything unless the game was playable. Well, I'm happy to say the new Colossus on Switch runs remarkably well. Kudos to Panic Button for it's such an amazing port. I mean, these guys really know how to handle the Switch hardware. What took me by surprise regarding the gameplay is how cinematic everything feels. It's a first-person shooter, but with a heavy emphasis on storytelling. Ten minutes into the game, and I already felt attached to these characters. An interesting story and clever writing really set this game above other first-person shooters I've played. Or maybe I just haven't played enough first-person shooters to begin with. I guess that's what happens when you play nothing but Killzone Mercenary and Call of Duty Declassified for the last seven years. My only concern with the gameplay is that later missions do require you to read the environment a little more. The levels are not exactly structured in a linear fashion, so making your way around can get somewhat confusing. I do, however, like how each mission objective has something to do with advancing the narrative. You never feel like you're simply going on a fetch quest, but rather doing something that actually pertains to the story. Very nice. If you played it on consoles, you'll probably have a heart attack when you see it on the Switch. But if this is your first time, then the Switch port is definitely worth picking up. Number 2. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 The Black Order I think the main appeal here is not so much the gameplay, but rather the ability to see your favorite superheroes and supervillains portrayed on the big screen. Or small screen if you're playing portable. I mean, the gameplay isn't anything special. You have your basic light and heavy attacks, in addition to your special moves, which you accumulate the more you level up. Then you have your combined attacks, which you perform in combination with a fellow teammate. But other than that, there's really nothing that stands out to me. The gameplay isn't bad, it's just overshadowed by what the rest of the game is about. Comic book superheroes. It's button masher friendly, and truth be told, there's nothing wrong with that. It harkens back to the days of arcade beat-em-ups, only this time it's a little more fleshed out. You can switch to secondary characters on the fly with a huge unlock roster to choose from. I think half the fun to this game is basically just picking out your favorite heroes and having them work together. I wasn't too thrilled with having to play with other characters from Guardians of the Galaxy, but luckily it was only for the beginning tutorial. If you're familiar with previous games in the series, Ultimate Alliance 3 shouldn't really be anything new, at least in terms of gameplay. Presentation, however, I can see it's definitely taking a step up. There's more care and attention put into the special moves, and boss encounters finally do justice to the source material. Music and voiceovers are excellent as well. Spider-Man sounds like Spider-Man, and Iron Man has that weird robotic sound that he makes. You guys know what I'm talking about. There's a huge selection of characters to choose from, and although I don't read the comics, I did recognize the majority of them. I don't care much for Daredevil, but after seeing him appear in one of the levels, I can't help but become a fan. The developers did an excellent job in bringing these superheroes to life, and with that, I think is the main reason to get this game. If you're a comic book fan and want to see your favorite superhero or supervillain in something other than a Marvel movie, then you definitely have to check out Ultimate Alliance 3. Number 1. Astro Chain this game is probably one of the most well-polished action-adventure titles I've ever played. There's very little about Astro Chain that I can complain about. Other than the silent protagonist and the slightly out-of-sync voiceovers, this game is near perfection. It includes hack-and-slash gameplay with role-playing and investigative adventure game elements. Imagine Bayonetta with a little bit of detective work from the Batman Arkham games and a tiny sprinkling of Super Mario Sunshine. You fight enemies using creatures called legions that's basically tethered to you by an Astro Chain. I guess that's where they got the title. You can use the legions to aid you in combat or help solve investigations. You'd think it would be quite confusing having to control two characters at once, but it's really not. It's actually a really neat mechanic. The left stick moves your main character, while the right moves your legion. Offering support in a variety of ways, legions can help fight chimeras, clean up red matter, 
perform long jumps, or even use the astral chain as a tripwire to fend off charging enemies. Regardless of the use, the concept is thought out and well executed in my opinion. There's also the over-the-top action sequences that Platinum games are known for, and let me just say, they do not disappoint. They're bright, colorful, and kinetic, displaying brilliant neon-looking colors, drawing heavy inspiration from cyberpunk anime. If you ever thought that the Switch hardware was underpowered, then you haven't played Astro Chain, a true showcase for what Nintendo's hybrid console can really do. As if that wasn't enough, the game is backed by one of the best soundtracks ever in a video game. I was totally not expecting the game to sound like this. Saying that the music is phenomenal would be an understatement. Case in point, the score that plays inside the police station. It sounds like something you would hear in a trance nightclub. Totally out of character, but for some reason, just works. If you thought Breath of the Wild was the best exclusive on Nintendo Switch, then think again. Astro Chain is the new king in town. Now I know everyone is getting ready to run out and get a Switch, but before you do, check out this next video where I talk about things you should know before picking one up. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.